Welcome to the Eric Brady Podcast, Series 1, Adolf Hitler, His Bombers and Me. Episode 10, Churchill and the Welsh Miners. You were re-evacuated from Folkestone to Wales. What was the attitude of people in Wales where you were sent? This was problematic. The reason was recent history, in fact because they were tight-knit, small mining communities, and there was still very, very deep resentment against what was called the London government. There'd been a very strong miners' strike in 1910 and 11, when the miners who lived and worked in appalling conditions were um, went on strike for better working conditions and better wages. The problem then was that there were pitched battles between striking miners and the police, particularly when the mine owners were bringing in strike breakers. The Glamorgan chief constable asked Churchill, who was the home secretary at the time, uh, for army backup because the problem, as he saw it, was so severe. And in fact, Churchill sent the 18th Hussars, which were horseback soldiers at the time, to be reinforcements if necessary, and, quote, if the local magistrates ask permission to use them. So it wasn't that he sent them into battle with the miners immediately, but they were there. And then, when they were out on patrol, they went to a village, a small mining village near Tony Pandy. And as they were coming back, they met the Hussars, met a parade of striking miners. Then, however it began and versions conflict, the miners and the Hussars attacked each other to the extent that 500 civilians were injured and 80 soldiers. And Churchill was blamed for sending the soldiers, which the miners considered was totally wrong, overkill and unnecessary. Then in 1926, there was another miners strike when the owners were demanding that the miners should work longer hours and have lower pay. So the miners went on strike. The TUC, Trade Union Congress, supported them and there was the general strike. But comments are that the general strike itself, which took in a huge range of workers, was not very wholehearted, shall we say, and that it only lasted for nine days. Eventually, the miners were forced back to work through sheer poverty and starvation. And so when it came to 1940, and the Welsh from those villages were asked to take, quote, London vacas, there was that underfeeling of tension and resentment, and particularly because Churchill then became prime minister. And the memories were still of he had ordered soldiers. And um, so there was a lot of resentment against the London government. Despite that history, the Welsh people took the evacu- evacuees into their homes, didn't they? They did. And they were very kind. And looking back, I, it was a very big thing, really, for people to take total strangers that they knew nothing about into their homes and then had no idea what we would like. And also, we came from a wide variety of backgrounds, of course, and also they didn't know how long for. They all knew, only knew we were taking them, they were taking us in for the duration. And of course, that lasted for years. And... Uh, One thing that the government did do is that they did give the foster parents an allowance. I remember it was 10 shillings and sixpence in the old money uh, for one child and 17 shillings for two children. 
and then multiples uh, above that. But um, yeah. For what period was that sum before? Uh, that was per week. So uh, that wasn't a bad allowance for the time because the average man's wage would have just been five or six pounds. Eric, you and your sister Kitty were both re-evacuated to Wales. I know you were in Tredegar. Were you with Kitty this time? Kitty and I had expected we would be together, but we never were. And on the one occasion I saw her in the two and a half years we were evacuated, we saw her once, and I think she was in a different town altogether, because Tredegar wasn't very big, and she said that she had to come on a bus to see me. To buy your copy of Adolf Hitler, His Bombers and Me to read alongside the series, go to ericbradybooks.co.uk. The Eric Brady Podcast can be found on YouTube, podcast services and at ericbrady.blogspot.com.